Lush foliage that extends far beyond the eye's perception. A magnificent natural atrium where majestic trees display their leaves and create a protective shade over strange ferns and rare orchids residing in their branches, over graceful arching palms and exotic bold leaf shrubs emerging from the mist. Delicate vines crawl with purpose along the forest floor while fruit bearers drop nourishment upon the earth. Exquisite flowers of brilliant color and delicate beauty shown only here. Extraordinary to the senses, intoxicating to the imagination. These are the plants of Amazonia, the rainforest. to the indoor garden. I'm Liz Kean, and today I'm coming to you directly from the rainforest, the same place where some of your house plants come from. Actually, I'm at the Amazonia exhibit at the zoo. Today, we're getting a sneak preview of some of the plants before the animals come in. Now, this exhibit will open up to the public in November, but today, we're going to get a look at some of the fascinating plants that come from the Amazon. And Bill Page, who's a zoo horticulturist, will be our tour guide. So come on in. Bill, this is really a wonderful indoor garden you have here. Hi, Liz. Welcome to the National Zoo's Amazonian exhibit. Well, thanks. This is Bill Page. He's a horticulturist here at the National Zoo, and he's going to be our tour guide through Amazonia today. Now, Bill, you've been working at the zoo for quite a while now. Uh, the yeah. end of May is when we started to plant trees in this building. Oh. Um, oh. The, the original idea was conceived in 1988 with the director and a few of the staff members to create a naturalistic habitat where both animals and plants are exhibited. Oh, I see. So there'll be free-ranging animals as well as uh, a, more of a botanical exhibit. Oh, so the plants and animals are going to actually interact right, with Right, exactly. Other. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this will be the first of several exhibits of this well, type here. Oh, well that sounds wonderful. Well, it certainly is hot and humid in here. Uh, yes, it is. It's apparently uh, patterned after a lowland tropical forest of South America. We try to maintain the day temperatures uh, around 90 to 100 degrees, uh, 70 degree night temperature with a 90% humidity. Well, no wonder. Yeah, it's great for the plants. I bet, being plants of the jungle, they especially appreciate this. Right. So now, where are these plants actually from? The Amazon, the Amazon River Basin. From South America. From South America. Across a, the equator. Uh, yes. Also, it's important to note that uh, the Amazon River Basin is approximately the size of the United States. Wow. So to re recreate an exhibit of that type of a building this small can create some real problems, but also it gives us a real wealth of plant material to work with. So it's almost a wide open field. Um, probably a lot of these trees haven't been grown under glass in temperate regions. Oh, I bet you're so right. So it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So are they doing pretty well so far? Actually, we should have built a roof probably twice as high. Uh, <laughs> well, you want to show us some of these wonders in here? Sure, sure. Um, in this corner, or in this section of the building, is the forest. And these are the 200-foot buttress trees of the jungle. Uh, this here is a model tree of a, of a buttress tree 
which a lot of these will start to develop with age. Well, I have never seen a trunk like that before. That is really wild. It's pretty interesting. And so this is a, an authentic replica yes, of, the it is. of the jungle. This oh. was made in pieces, brought in piece by piece, cemented back together, and then hand painted. It oh. took approximately about a month and a half for the painters to come in and seal the seams up and to put the, uh, put the tree back together. <laughs> what other plants do you have from the forest floor here? Right across the walkway is a mahogany. Oh. Uh, also behind, uh, behind the butcher's tree is another mahogany, and that's the largest tree in the exhibit. Is that up to the ceiling yet? Uh, in fact, we had to take about 20 foot off that tree to get it in the building. Uh-huh. Well, that's something. But that's the mahogany that your kitchen cabinets and countertops are made of. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, it's almost extinct in the wild. Oh, it is? Yes. So it, does it only grow from? in the Amazon jungle? Yes, it does. It does. There's another does. species that grows further north, and that's just about disappeared also. So all the chopping down of the rainforest is contributing to the loss of that mahogany That's tree. exactly right. It is. Exactly right. Are there any other endangered trees? Yeah, there's quite a few in here. However, there's also some trees that bear fruit and are bene beneficial to man on a sustainable yield concept. Uh -huh. We have a cashew right over in the other corner here. Oh, Which started nice. to flower yesterday for the first time. Oh, that's great. So you may have some cashews yourself in here. Hopefully, yep. But that's also an endangered species? No, it's not. It's not? No, it's not. Uh -huh. It's not cut down for the product that it yields. Oh. Unlike the mahogany. Oh, I see. Also, the kapox, which this is patterned after, uh -huh. um, is a real typical tree of the forest, a 200-foot buttress tree. These buttresses hold the tree up. Shallow tropical soils don't give a chance, the tree a chance to root real well. So trees do this to hold themselves up. Well, that is really wild looking. So that's why they're in that funny shape. That's right. Huh? To help themselves stay put. Hopefully <laughs> some of these trees will start to develop these buttress roots. Oh, well, that'll be interesting. That would be mm -hmm. Any other trees you wanted to show me right around here? Um, right behind us here is an ebony tree. Oh. And the wood is that, of that tree is used to make fretboards for guitars and other musical instruments. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And they get it from the rainforest also? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Well, that's really interesting. So I know you have a lot more things to show me, don't you? Sure. If you so, want to take a walk around the corner here, we'll see what else we okay, have. Okay, well, let's go. <laughs> well, Liz, over here is perhaps some of the rarest plants in the building. Uh, this is a collection of epiphytic, epiphytic ferns from the Amazon. And a few of these haven't even been identified yet. Oh, really? Also, a, uh, the only uh, member of the staghorn fern family found in South America, as well as some very rare orchids. That orchid is so cute. That is pretty, and that is extremely rare. Really? We're lucky enough to be able to get that one. Do you know what type that is? That's an Acacallus sinia. Ah, well, it is really something. It is, it is a beautiful <laughs> plant. And those ferns are wild, too. They don't look like ferns I'm used to. Something. They are pretty. They are. And what else do we have along here? Right around the corner, we have the other K-pop tree. Oh, we yes. The uh, fearless one around the other side. Well, this is the one with the thorns. It sure is. Look at those. That is, that is a nasty looking tree. <laughs> and they are very pointy, They are very too. sharp. Now, is this a safeguard against plants? I mean, not plants, animals. I'm sure animals it's a, a safeguard against region. some type of predator that may use it, or uh, maybe even you know, uh, human beings. Um, Could be. The interesting fact is that a very important plant economically for the, for the native peoples of the region is that the flowers are used as pillow stuffings. You're kidding, instead of feathers? Right. <laughs> and hence, K-pop or silk frost tree. Let's take a walk down okay. to the river. Now, Bill, isn't this a mimosa up here? Yes, that is. Also known as the sensitive plant. Mm -hmm. Now, you can grow that in the house if you have a sunny window. Yes, you can. If you can go ahead and uh, give that a tap, and you can see the, see the leaves fold up. They really are quite an oddity. Look at this. Now you can see why it's called a sensitive plant. The leaves fold up 
when you touch them just a little bit. They'll unfold again though, won't they, in yep. just a few minutes. A couple of minutes they'll be back out where they <laughs> should be. This is a, a good chance to take a look down at the, the river basin. Um, there's s several uh, useful house plants here too. There are. I see there's the nephthitis crawling down the wall there. That's certainly a hardy house plant, and I guess it comes to us from the rainforest. Yep. And not only that, I see another hanging type of plant, the grape ivy that's hanging down the wall over there. They're also a hardy house plant. So that's interesting to see where they come from. Yep, it is. They're all from the Amazon. Now, what is that strange-looking flowered bush or tree over there with the red flowers? That's a small flowering tree found along river courses in the Amazon. Uh -huh. It's a warwissia. A warwissia? Yes, it's also the national flower of Trinidad. Uh-huh. And myth has it that the natives use root extractions as an aphrodisiac. No kidding. That's not something we may <laughs> want to look into. <laughs> Maybe that's a marketable plant too, There you huh? go. <laughs> okay, I know you have several other things for me to see today. Sure, let's take a walk further around the corner. Well, this right here is a real interesting tree. This one here? This one right here. Uh -huh. This is a chicle tree. And this is where we get the base for chewing gum. Oh, it's the, the that's bunk, amazing. The trunk is scored with uh -huh. a machete. Buckets are hung underneath it. The latex is collected. And uh, from there, you have your base for chewing gum. Oh, who would have thought that gum grew on trees? Well, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That right is fascinating. That is fascinating. And on either side of this, this tree here and the larger one to my right are two chocolate trees. Oh. And this happens to be a real interesting tree in the fact that unlike most temperate trees, this, this tropical tree flowers along its trunk. It does. I've never seen that. Yeah. It's called califloria or califloreus. Just little tiny white flowers. Little, little tiny flowers. Oh. And later this will develop into the big cacao pods. Mm -hmm. And it only becomes chocolate after it's processed. And we've set some pods way up in the tree. You should be able to see. It's a very valuable commodity. Up until the 1940s in Mexico, the bean pods were used as currency. No kidding. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> real interesting. That is. I need quite a few amazing plants in mm -hmm. here. Let's see, now I see us some haliconia. Yep. We're walking into the light gap area of the forest now. Oh, we are? Mm hmm. Yeah, this, the light's coming through and the ground plane is going to become more crowded with plant materials, unlike the forest where we were dark overhead and a little plant growth on the forest floor. This end of the building almost reverses itself. You're kidding. Man, yeah. pretty, pretty neat. That is. Now here's the Heliconia, which I know is mostly renowned for its beautiful flowers. When I used to work at a florist, we would use these in an exotic arrangement. They are something. While we're here, right behind it, or in between it, is also the real rubber tree. The rubber tree of commerce. Now where is that? Oh, right here. Yeah, right here. Uh -huh. That's a euphorbia. It has the real milky latex. And, and again, the trunk is scored with a machete, and the latex is collected. And that will eventually become your car tires and whatever else. So that is it, right that's, here. That's, that's a rubber tree. That's where a, all that's our rubber real comes from. That's the real one. That must be a big business down there. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes it is. Right here is a balsa tree. Boy, that has huge leaves. Huge leaves. That tree is huge. <laughs> that tree is probably about two years old. Uh -huh. We grew that from seed here at the zoo. And if you take it, you can feel how light it is. Oh, it's it a is. A light wooded tree. It is. And, and again, that's a good example of an emergent tree species found after the land has been cleared. At the bottom growing up around it is a vanilla vine. Is that There's, where vanilla comes from? That's where your vanilla comes from. Oh, and no it's the kidding. Only orchid of any commercial value. Uh, doesn't it get beans? Yes, it does. Point? And they have to be hand pollinated, in fact, to set fruit. Oh. That's why vanilla, when you buy in the bottle, uh -huh. is so expensive because they need the people to go out and actually hand pollinate the Oh, flowers. really? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And what do we have over here? 
Over here is an example of what we made to be an artificial termite man. And it's modeled after a cecopia tree, which is the tree right over your head. Oh. Again, a real typical emergent tree of Central and South America, and also happens to be the favorite food of sloths. Hopefully we'll add some sloths a little bit later. <laughs> Maybe they'll be a little kinder to the tree, I hope. So that's what happens if you don't take care of your termites. <laughs> that's right. I see. That's right. <laughs> a little further down here, and growing east amongst the, the heliconias, is this, our sweet potatoes. Sweet which potatoes? Which are native to the American tropics. Oh, right here? Right here. Mm -hmm. It's a vine. So, crawling vine, rambling vine across the ground, oh. and it's the tubers that are dug up and, uh, and eaten. But as the parent of a lot of our modern cultivars of sweet potato. Well, that's interesting. I didn't realize they grew that far south, mm -hmm. but they do. Yep. <laughs> also, what a lantana. Oh, this lantana. Is a species lantana, which... Right, sometimes we see that in the backyard. And is this one bloomed for you? Yes, yes it has. It's uh -huh. a bright yellow, a real pretty yellow. Mm -hmm. They are nice. Well, that is really interesting. We've got all kinds of amazing plants in here. Sure. If we'll, we'll take a walk down to the end. We'll take a look upstream. And all right. some of the food plants that we have down this end of the building. Okay. What area is this, Bill? Well, there's, this is the light gap area of the exhibit. And what's the light gap? It's a situation in the forest created by, number one, a natural disaster, or by man clear-cutting the forest. And this exhibit here, it also happens to be the prettiest, I think, view of the building as you look downstream. Um, oh, it really is. It really is pretty. It's very It nice. gives you a good idea of what <laughs> a, a tropical river would look like. Um, the plant materials, again, are those selected, which you would find growing along the river. Oh, and a little bit later, there'll be some fish in those rivers, huh? Ah, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> an interesting point is that also a lot of the trees were selected for their fruit. And as these trees bear fruit, they will actually begin to feed the fish. Oh. It becomes maybe a self-sustaining little ecosystem here. Well, that's fascinating. And it'll become a food for the fish. I never knew fish ate food off trees. Uh, <laughs> In the Amazon, it's a quite common occurrence. Uh huh. However, also, we have a lot of food that man uses, and it may appear at some time or another in your kitchen. For oh, example, yeah. For example, of avocado right above us. Well, it sure is. Yeah, that's a pretty tree. Did and you ever eat one with of avocados. Us? <laughs> we tried one yesterday and are not quite ripe yet. Ah. Behind us is a papaya. Oh, it sure is. Now, have you tried one of those? Not yet. They're not ripe yet either. <laughs> However, we have tried the guava on the other side of the walkway here, and they're not one of my favorites. That is really <laughs> amazing, seeing these fruit trees inside a building like this, but this is the real thing. This is the real thing, <laughs> yep. What else is unusual in this area? Well, at this end of the building, we have a flooded forest. And this is a good example of a home for epiphytes. An epiphyte? Right. Now, I don't think everybody knows what that is, so why don't you tell them? Epiphytes are plants that live on other plants. Oh, okay. Very good. And uh, mostly you see like bromeliads and orchids in that uh, category. Quite, quite a few plants are actually epiphytes. Orchids are the largest plant families on the face of the earth. And oh, they really? are almost entirely epiphytic, <laughs> as well as the bromeliads, also ferns, jesnerids, oh, or members right. of the African violet family. Oh, really? And also ficus trees and some philodendrons or aeroids are also epiphytic. Oh, no kidding. I didn't know all that. Mm -hmm. It's been found in the rainforest that one tree limb may contain 200 species of different plants on one limb. A whole world on A one whole limb. World on one tree limb. That's amazing. Also down in the forest, the bottom right there is a bixa, which is a very <laughs> important part of the native flora. Uh-huh. And this is the source of the red food coloring found in food oh, no kidding. that we use and the natives that live down there also use it as a red face paint or a red face dye. Oh. 
That's amazing. It's, there isn't even any red in its leaves. No, it's the, it's the berries that are ground up into a paste. Oh, I see. It's from the berries then. Mm -hmm. And it, that is also apparently uh, going to be a large scale agricultural supplement for cocaine crops. Oh, no. They're going to replace <laughs> the, co the cocaine fields in the highlands of Bolivia and Peru with this Bixa. That's what they're trying, whether this will work or not. But that's the plan it. right now. But that's the plan. So that it is a marketable work. product. Uh-huh. Well, Bill, that's about all the time we have today. But can we come back another time when the exhibit's done? Sure, please do. Oh, I'd really love to. And thank you for being a wonderful tour guide. I also want to thank the National Zoo for allowing us this sneak preview of their Amazonian exhibit. It was really great. Thanks for watching.